hello friends uh, welcome to maths tutor lecture channel and uh, this is for the bsc third semester students of the university okay so here we are going to solve the paper on mathematical physics uh, c5 paper 2020 right and this is part 5 part 5 and i have provided the links of part 1 to part 4 okay so from part 1 to part 4 i have solved from question number 1 to question number 3 now today we're going to start from question number 4 right so before we start please subscribe the channel hit the thumbs up button and also hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new video will be uploaded and also share with your friends and uh, inspire me to create new contents and please join the poll i have posted in the community post uh, just uh, tell me what course you want me to create from the next year 2023 so let's start so question number four here we need to prove this relation so this is evaluation of beta function right so let us solve this uh, let us prove this so here you see we have beta function of m n this is integration uh, from 0 to 1 x to the power m minus 1 1 minus x to the power n minus 1 dx right so which can be written as uh, so 1 minus x can be taken as first function and that one as second function right uh, here you see here we're gonna apply actually integral by parts and uh, integration by parts so you know when you take this one as first function and this one as second function then uh, this one will be uh, you know uh, to integrate this term will be easier than uh, this one so that's why i have taken uh, i have changed the order so this let me first uh, perform the integration part taking u and v so we know that uh, this product rule integration of product rule so pro product of two functions so that is u uh, integration of v dx minus integration derivative of u uh, integration v dx whole dx right so we have taken this one as u and this one as v right so if you continue this process then let's integrate so hope you know integration differentiation well right so after integration once we have got this right so this m can be written here yes right so this m can be written here so now let us use this result here so here we are integrating from 0 to 1 right we are integrating from 0 to 1 so we have to put uh, 0 to 1 0 to 1 so on so this is the result we have got right so right. you see the pattern here uh, when there is n minus 2 this x to the power m this can be written as uh, let me write here separately 1 minus x to the power n minus 2 then x to the power m which can be written as plus m to uh, m plus 2 minus 2 right dx so in the next step if you integrate this uh, using integrating by parts again then uh, you will get here 1 minus x to the power n minus 3 and uh, here x to the power m plus 3 minus 2 that's what you will get and it will be continued so on right at at one it stays if you continue this process you will get uh, 1 minus x to the power n minus n that's going to be equal to 1 and uh, x to the power m plus n minus 2 that's what you will get right so let us continue continue this process integrating by parts again uh, we get so, uh, before we integrate let me uh, tell you one more thing here you see if you put 1 and 0 here 
uh, if you put one here that's gonna be zero and if you put zero then also it's gonna be zero so this terms becomes zero right so here we are going to apply again integrating by parts so here consider v u and this co can be considered as v so and if you do so then what you will get uh, here you see uh, here we have n minus 1 in the next step you will get n minus 1 into n minus 2 and here this m uh, here you see there is m so in the next step 0 to 1 and this n minus 2 will be uh, n minus 3 1 minus x to the power n minus 3 and x to the power this m can be written as uh, m plus 1 uh, in the next step you will get a m plus 1 so m plus 1 this one can be written as 3 minus 2 right so so here you see when you had m here you have got m here so now we have m plus 1 uh, here dx so here we can write m into m plus 1 right if you and continue if you integrate this uh, if you continue this integration the next step you will get n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 and by m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 and integration 0 to 1 1 minus x to the power n minus 4 and x to the power m plus 2 dx so if you continue this uh, if you continue this integration uh, you will reach a stage where this power will become n minus n and here it will be now you see if there is minus 4 this 2 can be written as 4 minus 2 so when there will be n then m plus n minus 2 can be written when there was 3 we have this one we uh, it can be written as 3 minus 2 right so we're gonna get this so hope you got this uh, uh, hope you uh, have understood this uh, concept so if you observe the pattern then uh, and this numerator will be continued to 2 into 1 right n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 so it is decreasing and it will be decreased up to 1 so that means uh, it can be written as factorial uh, n minus 1 right factorial n minus 1 and this the uh, this denominator uh, this will be you know uh, this will be go uh, this will goes up to l uh, sorry m into m plus 1 uh, dot 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 m plus n minus 2 right it will goes up to this step right so what next what we will get right so let me write the step here uh, in the next slide so let me take another slide so what we get now uh, sorry so we have got m minus 1 into sorry not m n minus 1 into n minus 2 and the dot dot so on you will get 2 into 1 at the end right and here denominator will be n into sorry m into m plus 1 into m plus 2 into dot 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 at the end you will get m plus n minus 2 that's what you will get and here you will get integration 0 to 1 x to the power n minus 1 uh, sorry n minus n and then you will get uh, not x to the power 1 minus x to the power n minus n and here you will get x to the power m plus n minus 2 that's what you will get right so if you observe the pattern here so when you had m plus 1 the denominator you see it is ended at m plus 1 when you have m plus 2 here it was ended at m plus 2 so when you have m plus n minus 2 so it must be ended at this right so hope you have understood this so here see now you see uh, this term becomes 1 uh, as n minus 
and is 0 anything to the power 0 is 1 and if you integrate this part integration of this integration of x to the power m plus n minus 2 dx that's going to be equal to x to the power m plus n minus 2 plus 1 by x to the power sorry not x to the power m plus n minus 2 plus 1 so that's going to be equal to x to the power m plus n minus 1 by m plus n minus 1 so let me write this result here so that's why this can be written this way x to the power m plus n minus 1 by m plus n minus 1 from 0 to 1 so if you put this value uh, 0 to 1 what you will get if you put here 1 1 to the power anything is 1 and and if you put uh, okay uh, uh, then uh, this term will result 1 by m plus n minus 1 right this new matter becomes 1 right on putting 1 so our final result will be n minus 1 into n minus 2 dot 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 2 dot 1 by m into m plus 1 into dot 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 m plus n minus 2 into m plus n minus 1 right you will get this so now what we can write here uh, you can see this new matter will be uh, n minus 1 factorial right the new matter will be m minus 1 factorial and the denominator denominator is 1 plus sorry not 1 plus m into m plus 1 m plus 1 and dot 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 m plus n minus 2 into m plus n minus 1 then here let's do one more thing now let's multiply both the numerator and denominator by uh, m minus 1 into m minus 2 into dot 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 2 dot 1 right and here also m minus 1 into m minus 2 into dot 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 2 dot 1 and so on right so if you multiply this then what you will get then you can see this will be factorial m minus 1 m minus 1 factorial right and the denominator can be rearranged as let me write here so in the new matter we have got n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 factorial and m minus 1 factorial and the denominator can be rearranged as uh, m plus n minus 1 into if you change the orders of the term uh, order of the terms m plus n minus 2 and dot 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 m into m plus 1 sorry not m plus 1 m plus 1 into m then m minus 1 into m minus 2 dot 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 up to 2 into 1 you you can change the order then this denominator will be uh, m plus n minus 1 factorial right so let me write uh, in the next slide what we have got here so finally we have got uh, n minus 1 factorial then m minus 1 factorial right m minus 1 factorial divided by uh, we will get n not n m plus n minus 1 factorial that's what we will get now you see gamma n is equal to factorial n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 right so factorial m minus 1 1 will be also gamma function of m plus 1 right and hence factorial m plus n minus 1 that's going to be factorial of this is going to be equal to gamma function m plus n right so our result is gamma function n by 
m f gamma n into m by so gamma m plus n or you can write this one as m plus n that is what we needed to prove right so let me go to the question here you see so what we are evaluating so we are evaluating beta beta of m and n so we have got that beta of m and n is this so that is how we can prove so hope you have understood this so our next question is question number five discuss the terms systematic error random error and list count error so first let us discuss about systematic error a systematic error a systematic error a systematic error is cons consistent is consistent sorry consistent repeatable error repeatable error associated with associated with faulty equipment or 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 flawed experiment design So this is the definition of systematic error so now let us discuss about random error and what is random error okay uh, the random error the random error random errors are non systematic are non systematic errors okay due to due to unknown cause unknown cause so we don't know the reason behind this uh, uh, error why it is taking place right now let, let us discuss about least count error so the error the error in me measurements due to the limit of resolution due to the limit of resolution uh, of the instrument of the instrument of the instrument is called the is called the least count error so hope you have understood this so now let's move on to next question now let's solve question number six so here you can see this is the given equation so let me take this one as equation number one and let us consider that uh, you which is a function of small x and t so let me consider this one as a product of two functions of x and t only so that is capital x which is a function of small x only and capital t which is a function of small t only so we have taken this so let us take this as, as equation number two now putting the values of uh, value of u uh, in equation number one if you put the value of u here then what you will get then you're gonna get this equation so now you see this is product of two functions if you differentiate it uh, partially with respect to small x so here capital x is the function of x only 
so we can take t as a constant so that's why we get capital t d capital x by d small x and we can apply the same logic on the right hand side also here the capital x will be considered as uh, constant as we are differentiating with respect to small t and where capital t is a function of small t only right so so we have got this result uh, the here this capital x is this is capital x not multiplication is taken as constant okay that means uh, here you see so this is the next step after this right so now uh, ddx of this capital x can be written as capital x this similarly uh, capital d uh, d capital d by d small d can be written as t this capital t this right so now if you divide both side it's an every every term by capital x and capital t you will get this equation and consider uh, this is b c let us say it is b c so we can write this one is equal to c and we also can write this is also equal to c right so let us take capital x this by capital x is equal to c then uh, x this means you know capital x this means derivative of capital x dex uh, x derivative of capital x with respect to small x and here we have one by x one by capital x right this x so integrating both side uh, so this dx can be multiplied by c uh, then you will get 1 by x dx is equal to c dx and we have integrated as c is constant it is taken out so integrating 1 by x integration of 1 by x is log of x right and uh, dx integration of this is x right and let me uh, take this log of a is it is a integrating constant right so now let us bring this term to, to this side and uh, use the property of log that is log m minus log n is equal to log m by n using the property we have got this result and here we have taken the base of log as e so that's why uh, capital x by a is equal to e to the power cx right so capital x is equal to this so this is the value of capital x similarly if you take this part here so then you can find the value of capital t right this one in on the other side divided by 2 so you have got c1 c minus 1 by 2 and uh, this t dash by t can be written as here t dash means derivative of capital t with respect to small t so and uh, this is small t is multiplied there so we have got this so integrating both side we have got this result right so here log b it is integrating constant right b is constant here so let's uh, move on to next uh, slide so let me write this equation on the next slide as well and uh, also value of capital x so i have so i have written the equation number two and the value of capital x because we are going to use these values and equation so now you see let me continue from this step now you see from this step let me continue on the next uh, slide so what we have got we have got this so here it can be written as using the property of log uh, log of capital d by b and uh, if you consider if, if, if here you know base of this log is e here so we can write this so hope you have got this now uh, from here we got the value of t that is equal to b e to the plus c minus 1 t by 2 right so now here you can see that we have got value of capital x capital t now let us put these values in equation number 2 right equation number 2 so putting those values we have got this result right so which can be written in this form so let us take this as, as equation number two now this is u of x and small x and small t right x and small t so if you take 
u of x and 0 that means if you put t is equal to 0 if you put 2 is equal to 0 then you will get this result because it's gonna be 0 and this whole thing gonna be 0 right and uh, so that is what we have got right so now you see it is given that u of small x and 0 is 6 e to the power minus trisex and from this equation we have got uh, e of x comma 0 is this a b e to the power cx right so comparing both sides we have got a value of a b that is equal to 6 value of c is equal to minus 3 so here cx this is minus 3x right so comparing these two we have got c is equal to minus 3 now let us put these values of a b and c in equation number 3 so this is the equation number 3 right if you put those values here you will get u of x and t is equal to this result so here this uh, here you see this a b is replaced by 6 and this uh, not this one this c is replaced by uh, minus 3 and this c is also replaced by minus 3 so hope you have got these things so this is very simple uh, you know simplification so and doing so we have got this answer that's how we can solve so hope you have understood this so now let's move on to next question so now we, we are going to solve this equation here we have del u by del x del u by del t i think as it is given u of 0 and y so that's why instead of t they should have used y right so let me take this as y okay so our given equation is so here is the given equation so let it be equation number one and let me consider the solution u is equal to which is a function of small x and small y uh, is a product of two functions which are functions of x and y only so capital x is a function of small x only and capital y is a function of small y only so using this value of u in equation number one so using two in one what we get we have got this so this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side of this equation after putting the value of u right so here we are differentiating with respect to x partially so keep y as constant then you will get this result and here on the right hand side we are differentiating with respect to y partially so keep the capital x uh, as a constant as it is a function of y x only so this is our right hand side and uh, this can be further simplified as this 1 by x and derivative of capital x with respect to small x and 4 1 by y derivative of capital y with respect to small y and let both left and right hand side uh, are equal to c is a constant say let it be c okay so we can write the left hand side is equal to c that uh, 1 by x and derivative of capital x with respect to small x is equal to c then this implies 1 by x dx uh, c d small x and integrating both side integrating both side we have got log of capital x c small x plus log of a where a is a constant right so now bring the log a to this side then we have got log capital x minus log a using the property of log we have got log x by a right so on the right hand side we have got cx and this implies uh, if you uh, here you see here the base of this log is e so here we can say uh, x by a is equal to e to the plus cx right so capital x a is equal to a e to the plus cx so this is the value of capital x similarly uh, taking this this part of this equation for 1 by y y uh, derivative of capital y with respect to small y is equal to c taking this uh, and then integrating both sides we can find the value of capital y so once you have got capital y and capital x right you have got capital x and capital y so let me write these two results on, uh, on the next slide also and uh, let me write the equation number two again also on the so this is the equation number two and these are the values we have obtained x and y 
and let me use these values of x and y in equation number two so we get this result right so which is equal to this so let it be equation number three so now you see if you find uh, u of zero comma y that means if you put x is equal to zero then your right hand side will be this so here because c into zero will be zero so e to the power zero uh, plus four c y that's going to be e to the power four c y and we you know uh, it is given in the question if you see this is uh, this value is given in this question and using this result here on the left hand side which is given in the question so we have got if you compare both side eight is equal to a b right eight is equal to a b and minus three will be equal to four c right so we have got four c is equal to minus three so c is equal to minus three by four now putting the value of a b and c in equation number three uh, we have got this result this is our solution so hope you have understood this so this is our last question of this paper so here solution of laplace equation either in 3d cartesian form or in 3d cylindrical form that means in any one we have to uh, find the solution of laplace equation now the laplace equation in 3d cartesian coordinate is given by this so equation number one so where u is a function of small x y and z uh, function of small x y and z so let me take uh, that uh, u is equal to suppose capital x uh, into capital y and capital z where capital x is the function of small x only and capital y is the function of small y only and capital z is the function of small z only so let it be equation number two so now you see uh, so let's find the here you see we have second order derivative of u with respect to x second order derivative of y uh, u with respect to y and with that of uh, u with respect to z so let's find the uh, the second order derivative of u with respect to x and then second order derivative of u with respect to y and z so we have got these three results right so when you differentiate uh, u once with respect to x then you get uh, yz uh, you have to keep the yz as constant as we are differentiating with respect to x then we get del x by del small x right and similarly if you differentiate it again then uh, you get del 2 u by del x2 is equal to yz again second order derivative of capital x with respect to small x similarly we have found the remaining two terms as well and using uh, taking this uh, all these three values as equation number three right and using those values in uh, equation number one uh, using three in one in equation number one uh, sorry i have made a mistake here that uh, should not be two using using three in one uh, we have got this equation right now you see uh, let us divide each term by capital x y and capital z divide each term by capital x capital y and z then what you will get so then you're gonna get this equation right and here capital x capital y are the re respectively are the functions of small x small y and z only right so they are independent x is capital x is function of small x only capital y is function of small y only and so capital z is function of small z only right so <laughs> if that is the case then you see what we can consider if you if you take uh, that uh, 1 by x this first term is equal to constant c1 second term is equal to constant c2 and third term is equal to constant c3 then you see uh, as on the right hand side 0 so sum of these three constants must be equal to 0 if you add this 3 then it must give 0 as on the right hand side we have 0 so hope you have understood this because you see um, uh, these are independent right so now you see as their sum is equal to 0 so we have taken c1 is minus k square c2 is minus m square and c3 is k square plus m square so that their sum becomes 0 right if you add all these three 
uh, then you will get zero right so uh, the, let it be equation number four uh, from equation number four we have got this equation number four implies this and now you see this is a differential equation partial differential equation and its auxiliary equation is this and from here this is a you know imaginary roots so its solution will be given by capital x which is a function of a small x uh, a k cos k x plus b k sine k x right so now let us consider a k is uh, c k cos phi k and so b k is c k sine uh, phi k and if you put the values of a k and b k here then you will get uh, this result and uh, this can be expressed as uh, in the form of c cos a minus b form using cos a minus b formula you can express in this form suppose this is equation number seven similarly we can find uh, the solution of equation number five similarly we can find the solution of equation number five putting c2 is equal to minus m square uh, we will get the solution this is the, uh, this is the solution we will, we're gonna get so here uh, uh, you see we're gonna put the values of those uh, constant uh, as we are using here a k b k so instead of uh, here you see instead of c k and uh, c k and phi k we're gonna put c m and phi m right uh, in case of this equation because we are taking here uh, c2 as minus m square right so that's why we're gonna use instead of k we're gonna use m right so that's the different thing only and now equation number six you can see this equation from this equation equation number six so this is the equation number six and value of c3 is k square plus m square so here we have c3 right c3 is equal to this if you put that you're gonna get this and this simplifies this and its auxiliary equation is this one and if you solve it you will get real roots here this is real right so if it is real then some constant into e to the power so i have written this constant ckm right so previously we have used ck cm so i have taken here ckm then e raised to the power plus minus root of a k square plus m square into z so we have got the values of capital x capital y capital z and we have put those values in equation number two so what was the equation number two equation number two was u which is a function of a small x small y small z is equal to capital x into capital y into capital z right we said a functions of respectively small x small y and small z so if you put those values here uh, that means using or putting seven eight and nine so here you see this is the equation number seven and this is eight and this is nine this is nine so if you use those values here then you will get this solution so that is the solution of laplace partial differential equation in 3d cartesian coordinate so hope you have understood this now you see we have one more part uh, in this equation here it, it was given that uh, find the solution of laplace equation either in 3d cartesian form or in 3d cylindrical form we have done the cartesian part now let us uh, let me give you the cylindrical form okay so let's start so here you can see this is the laplace uh, equation in 3d cylindrical form so now if you multiply both sides by r square then uh, you will get this form that r square del 2u by del r2 plus r into del u by del r then del 2u by del theta square del theta 2 and is equal to 0 so let it be equation number 1 so now you see let us consider that u which uh, is uh, let us consider that u is equal to capital r which is a function of small r and capital t which is a function of theta so if you find du by dr sorry del u by del uh, r here you see we are differentiating with respect to small r so t theta will be taken as constant then here dr by d capital r by d small r we will get and similarly we can find a second order derivative as well and we get this then similarly we can differentiate with respect to theta and so we got the uh, this is the second order 
derivative also now using these two values in equation number one so then this equation number one becomes this we'll take this form so then uh, if you simplify this equation let me go to the next slide so you can write the first uh, uh, this equation uh, this equation in this form after simplification then next step is this so here you say this 10 t theta t theta is taken common right so now you see we have taken uh, uh, this uh, this part to the right hand side and uh, we have divided both by capital T capital R right then we will get this step then we're gonna get this right so what we have done so this this part is taken to that side and doing so what we have got uh, this side is taken to that side then minus r so we got this right so if you divide divide both right and left hand side capital r by capital t capital r and capital t right if you divide then here tt will be cancelled one by r so here we will get r so this part divided by r right and here r r will be cancelled we have got one by t so hope you have understood these things so uh, okay so here you see this is a function of t only and this is function of r only so that's why we can say each of them equal to a constant h let us consider each of them equal to h now let us take this is equal to h first so taking that we have got this relation and simply after simplification now here you see if you put r is equal to e to the power z okay so we have put here e to r is equal to e to the power z and here is the auxiliary equation we have got now you see in order to explain how we have got this auxiliary equation from uh, this equation putting r is equal to simply e to the power z let me take uh, this equation in on another slide so this is the equation let me show you here how we have got that so if you put uh, small r is equal to e to the power z which can be written as log of small r where basis e is equal to z and if you find here if you differentiate both uh, with respect to uh, r then what you will get log of r base e and dz by dr you're gonna get that that is equal to 1 by r dz by dr that's what you will get so now let's find this okay let us obtain this so here you see d capital r by d small r it can be written as d capital r by d z into d z by d small r so already we have got that d z by d r is equal to 1 by r so you can put 1 by r here 1 by r dz that's what you can put now here you see uh, from here you can write that uh, r into dr by d small r is equal to d capital r by d z that's what you can write now if you consider d by dz is capital d then you can write this one as r d r d small r is capital d into r capital d of r you can consider that way right so similarly let's find again d to capital r by d r 2 uh, which is nothing but d d r of d d r of capital d by capital r sorry smaller d small r so and if you use this value here uh, sorry uh, okay so if you use this value uh, value of this dr by d small r if you use here then what you will get 
then here you will get 1 by r capital d r by dz right d capital r by dz so that's what you're gonna get so from here what you can do uh, if you define it it then what you will get 1 by small r square then d r by dz plus 1 by r you will get d to r by d z2 then you will get d r by d uh, small r right you're gonna get this right so if you simplify this then what you will get uh, sorry uh, this term here it, it should be d uh, z by dr right this should be dz by dr okay so here what we have done we have used the product rule actually right so as we are differentiating uh, it with respect to r and here we have dz that's why these terms comes here so hope you have understood this so now you can see that uh, what we can do again we can replace this by this value here you can see right if you put here the 1 by r then what you will get you will get minus 1 by r square plus 1 by r square here it will be replaced by 1 by r square then this 1 by r square 1 by sorry this will be replaced by 1 by r only 1 by r 1 by r it gives 1 by r square right so then uh, here we have got this so as we have taken here d by dz is capital d so it can be written as 1 by r so here r square is taken common or well, 1 by r square is taken common then uh, this is negative so let me write the negative term here so that gonna be d r and here you will get d square of r that's what you will get r is taken outside if the r is taken outside then you will get this so hope you have understood this uh, that's what we will get right so which can be written as uh, so, so we have got this as equal to uh, right okay now it can be written as uh, let me clean this part here okay let me clean this part hope you have understood this so now here you see from here you can write r square this r square is multiplied here then will be equal to 1d is taken common that's what we will get so we're gonna use these two values in this equation so using these two values in this equation what we will uh, what we can write so instead of this part we can write d into d minus 1 r so so let me clean this if you have understood this so if you okay if you put these values in this equation then you will get d into d minus 1 of r minus sorry not minus plus and this can be replaced by this value dr minus hr is equal to 0 so here you can see uh, you can take r common then you will get this result right so that is what they have written here uh, that i have taken from it uh, uh, taken from the book directly so this is what we have got so hope you have understood this and from here if you multiply d again here then d d will be cancelled this one will be minus d minus d plus d will be cancelled so hope uh, you know this kind of simplification this uh, very simple that implies this so this is the solution uh, this is the solution of d so if this is the solution then uh, the value of r the solution of this equation will be given by 
here you see this is auxiliary equation right this is the auxiliary equation if you solve it you got this uh, roots and if you got the roots plus minus root over is then the solution of this uh, differential equation should be of this form right should be of this form so hope you have understood this so here you see here we have e to the power root a z and we, here we have got r to the power root a because you see we had taken r is equal to e to the power z right yes or not so using that uh, here e to the power root over a and z it can be written as e to the power z into uh, uh, whole to the power root a right and this e to the power z is replaced by r that's how we have got similarly if you take this part okay if you solve this uh, differential equation then you will get this solution now using these two solutions using these two solutions uh, let me go to the next slide right we have got these two solution this one and uh, uh, next one is this t c3 cos root over a theta then c4 sine root over a into theta so we have solved this differential equation right here we have got uh, uh, imaginary roots so if the roots are imaginary this should be the solution uh, if you have studied differential equation you might have, uh, you you should get that uh, those things right and uh, here we had real roots that's why we have got this solution so now putting this value of t and uh, r so in the above equation uh, in this equation you, here you see in this equation in this equation if you take uh, equation number two right if you take the this is as equation number three and this one as equation number four using three and four so you can write using using three and four in two we get this result so this is the solution uh, this is the solution of the Laplace uh, equation in cylindrical coordinates, 3D cylindrical coordinates. And uh, there are some different cases are there. Okay. Just, you know, uh, we are asked to find the solution. So, up to this step, enough. Right. So, hope you have understood this. And if you have understood, please share with your friends. And uh, if you are new to my channel, subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. And also hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new video will be uploaded. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video.